God is good. <laughs> and all the time. <laughs> Candles at light would be good. <laughs> Indeed. Maybe, maybe they got rained on uh, last night, huh? Although that would not be good because that would mean we have a mess in the ceiling. So uh, uh, we'll, uh, we'll take a look at that here just momentarily. So welcome everyone to uh, Kingman United Methodist Church. So it's great to see everyone this morning. And if you're here, that means... Well, thank you. Yeah, it's been a couple of weeks, hasn't it? So uh, if, you, uh, if you're here this morning, it means that you don't have like big branches or trees uh, on your roof or your porch this morning, right? And so, or, or a trampoline wrapped around a pole at the high school. If you've seen that, uh, drove by that this morning or seen that on, on Facebook yeah, last night or this morning. So, but it is good to, to be here. And uh, today we conclude our series on the questions that uh, skeptics or that, that pe people that aren't religion are asking. And, and we're, we're ending it uh, in a very, t probably in, in, with a difficult question, which is, why is there evil and suffering in the world? And uh, we've been wrestling with this for a long, long time. And uh, I think with any of these questions, it's really hard in 20 minutes to give you a definitive answer. And, uh, and so we, we're, we're, it, these are really just about beginning conversations. And so uh, last week uh, was a very switch because typically when Abby and I did this last year and then this year, we, uh, we got to preach all of those sermons in our own church first. So what you got last week was the rough draft. And what I got last week or what I did there was at the rough draft. So, so you get a more polished uh, sermon today, perhaps. It may not feel that way, but it, it will to me. So, uh, but uh, anyway, so let us uh, stand as we uh, begin our worship and share the love of Christ with one another. For communion today, let us share our confessions of our sins to God and to each other, which apparently <laughs> it is in your hymnal on page 12. If we want to just do that, Daryl's got it. So just a second. So while Daryl is doing that, my, my initial uh, God is good all the time was to say helping our youth raise money is good all the time. And so there's a, a right, all the time? Okay, good, good. 
And so the, the next uh, Friday is the bake sale and the garage sale, and so we need items and we need people to help with that. And so I'm going to just pass those through. Okay. There, see, there's my confession. I, uh, I messed that up. <laughs> A little light of mine, and boy, I was, I'm done. So, all right, so let us pray together, shall we? Merciful God, we confess that we have not loved you with our whole heart. We have failed to be an obedient church. We have not done your will. We've broken your law. We have rebelled against your love. We have not loved our neighbors, and we have not heard the cry of the needy. Forgive us, we pray. Free us for joyful obedience through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Hear the good news that Christ died for us while we were yet sinners. That proves Christ's love toward us. So in the name of Christ, you are all forgiven. To God. Amen. And I would invite you to be seated as we come to a time of sharing our, as a community of faith, those uh, joys and, and our concerns uh, that, we, that we have this morning. If you have something to, uh, to share, looks like Kevin's working his way up to get the microphone, and you can just raise your hand and he will uh, bring that to you. If there's just a, a personal concern, then you can uh, fill out the orange slips of paper that are in the ends of the pew, place them in the offering a little later on in the service, and uh, they will be lifted up in, in prayer that way. Okay, looks like back to Kurt, who's got some grandkids, it looks like. Kurt and Sharon Watkins, our joy today, we have three of our grandkids from Derby, and they've been with us for uh, the weekend, Blake and Aubrey and Easton. All right. Welcome, guys. So. Hi, this is um, Soren, my friend. My friend Lucius sprained his... Um, hand, so, yeah, so, pray for him. Okay. Good morning, Brenda Mark, Larry and Brenda Mark. <clears throat> I have two things to share, and actually, uh, they are... They're good and bad, you know, the way a lot of things are. Um, I, three weeks ago, my nephew was hit by a car in Baton La, Baton La Rouge. No, wait, Baton La Rouge, was that a town? Baton La Rouge, Louisiana, yes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm thinking, that sounds so weird. Anyway, <laughs> and uh, he was on a mission trip down there for his church. He was hit by a pickup when he was jogging in the morning. And uh, he's 16, going to be a junior. So. His arm was severed within his body. He's had several surgeries. He has no use of his arm. But the good thing is he has great blood flow to his arm. Uh, they finally were able to find a surgeon back in Dallas, Frisco area, that will take him on, and he's back home. And um, so that is a miracle in itself because mm -hmm. they thought he was going to lose his arm. And for a junior, well, anybody, that would be very tough. Um, and he's an athlete to boot. Mm -hmm. So um, that's my first miracle, but continue to pray for him. His name is Charlie Means. Uh, both parents are teachers. Then um, all of you have heard me speak of Heather several times with the Hermansky's Pudlock syndrome. She's still on a waiting list for one or two lungs whenever that will happen. She went for a uh, appointment the other day at the hospital to see where she was on the list you know, uh, they put you in order. And her condition has worsened, which is bad, but the good thing is she's closer to the top to get the lungs. So uh, continue to pray for Heather. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Indeed. Thank you, Brenda. 
Mary Blumenhurst. I'm glad to have my brother Paul Hastings here with me today. Yes, indeed. Welcome, Paul. Kevin, can you uh, work that over to Charles? And Charles, you want to share about Bob DeFore? Okay, uh, Bob DeFore, we were kind of concerned about him. Uh, he was living in his house with no air conditioning. And anyway, we got an air conditioner for him. And now he went to, I'm pretty sure he's at the VA hospital for an appointment and they kept him. He has a blood clot in his leg and he has a blood clot in his lungs. And uh, I've been trying to contact him and so far I haven't had any luck. I've, I've had them dial his room three times and uh, we've texted him and I don't know whether they're letting him move or what, but he asked to be on our prayer list. So I wanted to mm -hmm. let you know about that. And, and aside from that, I just want to thank everybody for the kind words and the cards at the time that my baby sister died, mm. my little sister, youngest sister. <laughs> <laughs> I have three sisters. Anyway, uh, we appreciate that a lot. She is greatly missed. Indeed. Thank you. Indeed. Thank you, Charles. Um, a c couple of uh, other joys that I want to lift up this morning is that uh, uh, Trudy Parker is doing well, got home. Um, so that's Brandy's mom, and so she had surgery up in KC, and um, as, as far as I can tell, when we visited, doing great. Um, the one thing that she wanted to make sure that everybody knew was how much she appreciated her prayer shawl, and the warmth of that, and uh, this, it just made her day, and she had it on uh, up until the time they took her back, and then... Uh, Brandy's job was to make sure that she got it back. <laughs> yeah. yeah, shoes, you know, not a big deal. I want my prayer shawl. So, um, and then uh, Jackie Hansen had her hip replacement surgery and uh, is back home. And so let's uh, continue to pray for her complete healing, but, and, and then also the joy that she's home and able to do that. Uh, on Friday was our last summer lunch uh, officially over at the uh, elementary middle school. And uh, I, want to, I just want to say thank you to Paula Schlegel and Gail Easley for their daily help. One of the two of them was there every single day to help. And uh, this summer we served more than 3,000 lunches. And, um, and that was a, that's a 15% increase over last year. And, and there were kids that said, this is the only thing I'm eating today. So it's a good thing. Um, and, and it's something we should all celebrate that we're a part of. Um, on the concern side, um, Pat Ramsey is at now at St. Francis. Um, she, at, at the beginning of the week, they were concerned about leukemia. Uh, that is not the case. Uh, but what has happened is that the breast cancer has now worked its way into her bone marrow. And they're in this situation of she's not healthy enough to get chemo, but the only way to take care of the cancer is through chemo. And so it's which bad choice do you want? And so Pat is a fighter, and she chose to do chemo, even though her numbers uh, were not, uh, not, not what you would think uh, anyone could take and tolerate for that. Uh, but she has done surprisingly well. Or, I'm sorry, this is Pat Ramsey. Unsurprisingly well, right? And so her numbers are actually above now. Her, her blood counts are above where they expected them to be. And, uh, and so certainly a long row to hoe here, but we'll take whatever good news we can get um, in this situation. And so continued prayers for, for Pat and Steve and, and their kids and Lois and, and all of those that are, that are uh, 
involved in travel mercies to and from the hospital. So she is exactly where she needs to be right now to get, to get better. And then also um, my mother-in-law, Abby's mom, uh, Carol, um, had, had shoulder replacement surgery about three weeks ago and she was doing some rehab in a facility and she's now at ICU. Um, similar to what Bob's experiencing, she's got blood clots in her leg and, and in her lungs and then complicated with pneumonia. And so uh, prayers for, for her and, uh, and so, I, but I, I do wanna make sure that, that we're, we're praying for all these folks, so. All right, well let us uh, go to God in prayer, shall we? Gracious and, and loving God, we, we're humbled to be here today. Uh, to be in a, in a country where we're able to come and to worship, to be open and, and free with our faith, um, to wear such symbols as, as, a, as a necklace with a cross on it uh, is not a death sentence. And with that, God comes uh, responsibility and accountability to live that out, to not just have the symbols of our faith be our faith, uh, but for it to ooze out of each and every pore and every moment of our existence. God, we also uh, lift up to you today those that are, are hurting, uh, those that are, are suffering, uh, those that are healing, uh, and those that are convalescing. We give thanks for those that are in the healing ministry, from our healthcare providers to our hospitals and their staff to home health and pharmacists, uh, all who work together to bring about uh, healing and wholeness and health and cure. God, as we uh, flip the calendar to August too, we're changing our focus to start praying for our schools, uh, for our teachers, for our administrators and staff and paras and all of those that are that are, are placed in, in, in positions to influence and to shape and mold uh, the young minds of this community. So we just ask a blessing upon all of those in, in our classrooms and in our school buildings and upon those that make decisions and policies that it all be made uh, in the best interest to create a, an environment of, of learning and exploration and curiosity and also faithfulness, a faithfulness to the principles found in, in the Bible. So, God, as we, uh, as we continue our, our worship, we, we come to you knowing that none of us is, is perfect. All of us is seeking ways to, to get better today of, of what transpired yesterday. And we need your Holy Spirit to, to guide us, to propel us, to infuse us uh, with that wisdom and with the courage and with the strength. So for all of these prayers of God, as well as the ones that remain on our hearts, those that are written on the slips of paper, we lift them all up to you in the spirit of gratitude and thankfulness and pray as Jesus taught us, our Father who art in heaven. Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. You know, one of the things that... Uh, that as Pat's coming up, one of the things that I, I've shared is if I don't write something down, I tend to forget. <coughs> I did not write this down because I knew I wouldn't forget when I was saying prayers, but I did. And then I thought Mary might say something <laughs> when she stood up. Jerry Emery is missing. We do not know where she is. Um, two people went to go pick her up this morning for Sunday school. Her house was unlocked. 
um, but she is nowhere to be found. So um, my guess is that she's probably out walking around somewhere in Kingman. Uh, the police are looking for her, and so um, I want to include that in prayer, and so I'm just going to say a prayer uh, now separate from the other prayers because maybe that's why I'm supposed to do it that way is that we just need to pray. So let's all pray for Jerry, shall we? God, uh, wherever she is, just watch over Jerry and I'd help her to, to get home safe or to get to, to a hospital if, if that's what's needed. God, be with our, our police who are out looking for her this morning. And uh, God, the sooner that we can find her, the better. Um, God, help, if, if there's any way that any of us can be a, a part of that, God, we just, uh, we just call upon your name to shield her and protect her and guide her to safety. Um, for her family, that's, that's who got, not, if they don't know, we'll know, and, and the worry that comes uh, with that, too, God, just provide uh, comfort, and, and if Jerry's out there confused, God, get, just, just be with her uh, in this time, all of this, in Jesus' name we pray, amen. during the offering so let us pray <laughs> all right god in in the midst of, of life's uh, turmoils and surprises uh, we come to you seeking refuge and strength so this morning as we uh, receive our, our offering let it be a reminder to us of how all of life is an offering to you and so whether it's in in the ways in which we give financially or the ways we give of our time our talents and our abilities uh, let everything that we do uh, be a fragrant offering acceptable to you. And so in Christ's name we pray. Amen.
or did I just hit uh, mute? All right, all right. Well, if you want me to hit it again, um, we'll take up a different offering, and we'll see. No, all right. <laughs> Let's go to the scripture, shall we? Today's, uh, today's gospel reading is uh, the first seven verses from the ninth chapter of, God, of John's gospel. It says, as, as he walked along, so as Jesus walked along, he saw a man blind from birth. His disciples asked him, Rabbi, who sinned, this man or his parents, that he was born blind? Jesus answered, Neither this man nor his parents sinned. He was born blind so that God's works might be glorified in him. We must work the works of him who sent me while it is day. Night is coming when no one can work. As long as I am in the world, I am the light of the world. When he had said this, he spat on the ground and made mud with the saliva and spread the mud on the man's eyes, saying to him, Go wash in the pool of psyllium, which means scent. Then he went and washed and came back, able to see. The word of God for the people of God on this day. Thanks be to God. Shauna. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, amen to that. If only all of our prayers could be answered that quickly and completely, huh? Well, that's part of what today's sermon's all about, so let's pray. <laughs> God, may the words that I say and the things we all do make our life songs sing and bring a smile to you. Amen. You know, turn on the, the TV or pick up a newspaper or get on social media or, or a, a, a website that, that has the news, and it doesn't take long to find a story about something horrible happening either close or far away. When you think uh, uh, of, of North Korea or, or as close as, uh, as Pat Ramsey or, or Jerry this morning. In, in theology, the presence of, of evil, despite God's ultimate power, goodness, and endearing love, is called the theodicy question. Since Cain and Abel, humans have struggled to understand the causes and the reasons of why bad things happen, and especially why do bad things happen to good people. Since Augustine of, of Hippo in the 4th century, theological thought has had to compromise one of these divine traits. All right, so if God is all-powerful, well, why would then would God allow evil things to happen? Yet that goes against that God is all-loving. So if bad things happen, well, perhaps God is all-loving, God's just not all-powerful. A, a prevalent dualistic heresy that's been around since the third century is called Manich Manichaeanism, which that will never be on anybody's spelling test unless you go to seminary. Manichaeanism is saying that the, that the devil and God are equal. So if you say something to the effect of, well, the devil's in charge of this world and God's in charge of the next, that's Manichaeanism. There, I can't even say it right. Manichaeanism. Right? In fact, that's not really a Christian understanding of the powers of God. The Puritans used to say when, you know, our country was founded on, on, on that, but the Puritans' understanding was that if something good happens to you, look out because something bad is right around the corner. Maybe some of you have heard that one, or, 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 or maybe. But that's that same understanding of the devil is an equal to God, that God is the force of good and the devil is the force of bad, and so they're of equal power. In the 6th century, you'd be, you would be burned at the stake for making such a statement. But yet, it's, it's prevalent and has been ever since, uh, ever since the 3rd the century. Well, digitally connected millennials know that the church's standard answers to the complicated question of the presence of evil in the world seems plastic. 
impersonal, and perhaps even disingenuous. We brush aside this question at the risk of our own future. Right? The lack of answers for the presence of evil in the world is one of the major factors of why atheism is on the rise. So how about if you were having a conversation with a skeptic of, of, of any age, would you, the, the, to me, the, con, the starting point for that conversation would be having the same admission that we had about trying to, pr to believe in a God that you can't prove, which is, I don't have all the answers. People have been struggling with this ever since recorded time. And that maybe even admitting that we have some doubt ourselves. You know, I think one of the most genuine things that was ever told to Jesus came out of, out of Mark's gospel at 924, where the man, the father who'd had his son miraculously cured by Jesus said, I believe, help my unbelief. Because we, we all have doubts at times in our life, and maybe even this morning. And so just being genuine with that, I think, is important. And then I, I would speak of, of experience as being the best teacher of trying to understand the influence of evil and suffering in the world. Let me, let me share an example of, of that with you. Um, one of my... Uh, professors at Wichita State University, Tay, right, that one, <laughs> was, uh, his name was Don Douglas, and he was the European historian uh, when I was going through with my master's degree, and uh, he, when I heard a calling into the ministry, he was one of those people I went to to say, can this be real, <laughs> and, and uh, I, I just so respected him. And, and he's not one of those, you know, flaming liberal professors that universities get. In fact, you might have had him too, Lance. He'd been around forever. Oh, Lance avoided the liberal arts. No. <laughs> but uh, he's, he's retired. In fact, by now he's, he's deceased. And, uh, uh, and we went and had lunch uh, one day, you know, after I'd graduated and, and was on doing other things in my life. We just stayed in touch. And, 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 after this calling, I wanted to, to share that with him. And he said, why are you sharing this with me? I said, well, you know, it's all the reasons I just said. And he said, well, don't you know I'm an atheist? And I said, you could have fooled me. And he said, look, when I was a young man, my tank division served in Nazi Germany. We were part of the Liberation Army of Patton's part of the uh, of Patton's Corps that went into all of these concentration camps. And when I walked into that first one, I was all about Jesus. And after seeing what I've seen, I don't believe there's a God because of how could God do that? Right? If God's all loving and all powerful, why did all this bad stuff have to happen? Well, there's no way I'm going to tell this man that his experience <laughs> is wrong or, or that, you know, that he needs to see it in a different light. And, 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 and frankly, then I don't know that I would have had the skill set that I have now in order to do that. But yet, he started with his experience. His experience was that based on that traumatic event in his life, he could not understand the God that's all-loving and all-powerful. So while I may not have all the answers about why is there evil and suffering in the world, here is what I do know. Is that bad things are going to happen to you if you live long enough. And for many of us, it means you don't have to live very long. Right? Jesus says it this way in Matthew's Gospel. Right? That God sends the rain on the righteous and the unrighteous. John Wesley, the, the founder of, of the Methodist movement, 
in his covenantal prayer, writes, writes this sentence as a part of the, of the prayer. Put me to doing and put me to suffering. Right? And that suffering, therefore, can be a way of knowing that you are doing God's work. When, when suffering occurs, it can be evidence that you're doing something right. It, it, it may not be, but it, but it could be. It, it could be just part of the, it rains on the righteous and the unrighteous. Right? Why, did, why does Pat or Chad have cancer? It rains on the righteous and the unrighteous. It's hard to, to explain that. But really, I think that the most important part of, of this conversation is, is that if you do things, it's, it's really what you do things when bad things happen. How do you respond? Right? It's like trying to make lemonade out of lemons. So let me relay a couple of conversations that I've had over the last couple of weeks with, with people in the hospital trying to wrap a, my, myself around this question. It's always good to talk to other people and hear their experiences, right? Well, the first one is with Wanda Daniel. And we, those of you who have attended this church for the last three or four years know about Wanda, that, that she was blind and, and then could see. And then after she got her eyesight back, after years of being blind, now is dealing with heart problems and kidney failure and has been in and out of the hospital probably now over the last couple of years than what she was over the last 10 or 15. Well, she was back at St. Francis a couple of weeks ago, and so went in and, and visited with her, and the first words out of her mouth was, Patrick, God didn't get me this far just to take me now. There's some encouragement for you, isn't there? And we visited for about 30 minutes or so, and, and, and throughout that time, we were interrupted several times. You know, those of you who have been in the hospital know, it's the worst place to rest. <laughs> and so, so every time somebody come in to take a temperature, get a reading, or give her a pill, she knew their name, and she knew something about their family. This is 24 hours after the doctors and the people in Marion told her and told Phyllis, get your house in order because we don't think she's going to make it. That's an amazing thing of what she has under, undergone multiple times. And so I, I asked her, how do you stay so positive with all of the negativity in your health? All that suffering that she goes through. Experiencing heart failure and kidney failure are not pain-free things. And she said, it just gives me an opportunity to meet new people and to minister to them. What an amazing outlook, huh? The second one involves uh, Pat and Steve. That was, Steve and I were able to kind of sit down one, one day and, and just visit, just to check in with his, his soul and his spirit and all those things that are going on in, in their lives right now. And, and I said, Steve, how are, you, how are you looking at things right now? And he said, everything happens for a reason. I may not know. I may never know. Some things, I love how he said it, some things are way above my pay grade. <laughs> So he said, I just try to take everything in stride. As a, as a teacher at heart, I can see anything as a learning opportunity. Right? I may not like the lesson I need to learn, and sometimes the hardest lessons to learn right, are the ones you don't want to learn the most. And if you're like me, those are the ones you need to hear. Beyond the, the personal things, many natural disasters actually aren't natural disasters at all. They're only natural disasters because we as human beings have called them that. Forest fires, for example, are, are destructive. 
yet they're needed for recharging the forest. Floods destroy homes and get water into your basement, but the floods are also what provides valuable nutrients to our soil. So when I think what Wanda and Steve and in my own explanation are saying is that everything can be a Romans 8.28 moment. Right, for us to know that all things work together for good for those who love God, who are called according to his purposes. But it can't just be a cliche that we say when we don't know what else to say. In the gospel reading, Jesus essentially says the same thing as Paul does in Romans. Right, he, when, when asked the question, why is this person blind? Right, who sinned? What bad thing caused this action to happen? Jesus says it's not sin at all. Not his sin, not his parents' sin. Which is one of those classic explanations of why does evil exist in the world is, is that it's kind of like, it's like God's revenge on us for doing bad. But if God is all loving, God doesn't want revenge. God just wants us back in the fold. Now, Jesus is saying the man was born blind so that God could be glorified. Right? That's not a, a masochistic statement that we, we need to have torture and punishing and, and suffering and those kinds of things just so that God can be glorified, because God can be glorified in anything. But what I think what Jesus is saying here is that, is that God can also use the tragedies, the painful moments, the suffering moments, as ways for people to see God at work. Right? He, says, he says that God can be glorified in him. And that means through him. And maybe not his actions, the blind man's actions, but it's those that interact with him, their actions. So perhaps when bad things happen to us or to other people that we know, these are ways in which we have an opportunity to worship Christ with our hands and our hearts more than just our words. Just as the gospel calls on us to love our enemies because even the Gentiles love their friends, followers of Jesus are called to see how evil and suffering can be an opportunity to show the real, unconditional, and ever-present love of God in Christ. And when I hear this passage of the gospel, I have to think of my niece, Katie. Katie, I've shared the, the news with, uh, with you of Katie, that Katie is in a wheelchair. She has a form of muscular dystrophy. Her life expectancy was 13 Katie graduated from the University of Toledo from college last May, and this fall is going to seminary. She's not even supposed to be alive. And after she heard this calling from God, as, as any of us do, at least I hopefully, that's one thing you should always ask when you're getting a new pastor. Did you question your calling? Because <laughs> if they didn't, I don't, I'm not sure I'd want them to be a pastor. <laughs> But Katie's question was, why me? And not just why me as a pastor, but why me in a wheelchair? She is the most positive person you ever be around. She has a great sense of humor. She, and she's got so many things that she wants to do in the world. And, and anybody who comes in contact with her says, you've changed my life. And she said, but I'm a prisoner to my legs. Why me? And for 20 years, she's 22 now, I mean, for 20 years, she wrestled with God. She denounced God, even said there can't be a God if somebody like me is it stuck in this. And she said finally she got her answer. And the answer was, Katie, why not you? Why not you?
So why would Abby and I take six weeks out of our summers and your summers to try to talk about these questions that people have? Well, the world is fundamentally changing. Denying it really doesn't make it less so. And historically, the church has lagged behind in facing the future unafraid, as we say in our funeral services. The church unwilling to engage in the toughest issues of its day is one that has little to no faith in the power of the Bible as the living truth. The answers are here. I've also been doing a a little demographic work. And uh, it's quick to see what the future of the church is going to be if we don't have younger people in the church. So I think God's okay with us asking questions as it leads to a deeper faith. Questions are the seeds of a deeper faith. And it provides us opportunities to engage in theological conversations as long as we show mutual love and respect for each other and as equals in God's eyes. Paul says it best, we are all sinners and fallen short of the glory of God. So if if we look at ourselves in that light... We're looking through the eyes of God at one another. And that means that we need grace. We need amazing grace, as we sing about sometimes. But it's more than just the words. It has to be in our actions and in our motives, in ways that we outwardly, tangibly demonstrate that. One of the ways that God has tangibly and visibly shown that to us is through giving us the sacrament of of communion. And so today we celebrate the life, the grace, the forgiveness of our sins as offered to us through Christ, through the Passover lamb, the one who takes away the sin of the world. In our in our church this is an open table, which means you don't have to be a member of this church or any church in order to receive the sacrament. All you need is to have that desire for Jesus in your life. Starting uh, today, we're going to try communion a little different. I've heard some some people say, I don't like the way that we're doing communion. So we're going to try something a little different and see if we we like it better. Because this is an important part of our faith. We need to feel the presence of God when we come. So up front, you'll notice... The, the, our front pews here are able to have kneelers, or there are kneelers here. And so I'm going to invite you forward to come and then to move down as far as you can and to kneel, if you can. If you can't kneel, it's okay. Stand, stand and hold, uh, hold the bar. And uh, the servers will bring you communion. We're going to come down the row and come back down. If you need gluten-free Make sure you're in this row because it's right over here, okay? And so let's try this and see. You can stay as long as you need to to, uh, to pray as you receive the elements and, uh, and just to, to be in that right frame of mind. And so we remember that on the night in which he gave himself up for us, he broke the bread and gave it to his disciples, telling them to take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And when the supper was over, he he took the cup and gave thanks to God. He gave the cup to all of those around the table and said, take from this drink each and every time that you gather in my name. This is the blood of the new covenant given for you and for all for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in remembrance of me. So in remembrance of these, your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ offering for us. And as such, let us proclaim the mystery of faith, that Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. So pull out your Holy Spirit on all of us gathered here, God, and on these, your gifts of grain in grape. Make them be for us your body and your blood, that we may be for the world the body of Christ, redeemed by his blood, 
By your Spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world until Christ comes in final victory and we feast at his heavenly banquet. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit in your holy church, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty God, now and forever. I would invite those who are helping to serve this morning to come forward. So as with anything new or trying something different, it, it, it may not, we may have some glitches. <laughs> and so uh, the sacrament of grace requires grace. <laughs> Is he the body of Christ? Brenda, the body of Christ. Katie, the body of Christ. Brenda, the body of Christ. Susan, the blood of Christ. Brenda, the body, the blood of Christ. Katie, the blood of Christ. Brenda, the blood of Christ. Will you do it? Will you do it? Will you make a bed? Oh, here. Come and sit at kneel at the table of the Lord. I'll go for it. I know that it matters. Let's yeah, let's do that so that
us pray. God, we give you thanks for this holy mystery in which you have given yourself to us. So may we who have received it be nourished not only physically, but spiritually and relationally with you and with each other. And may we now, now nourished in your word and, and in your blood, may go forth from here to love and to serve one another as we love you. All of this in Christ's name. Amen. We do have uh, several announcements, so if you need to sit, please do so in this way. I, I just I want you to be comfortable so you hear what's up there, what we have. So, Amanda, I'm going to have you go first since you need to also get downstairs. So. Okay. All right. Um, this week is the churchwide um, annual garage and bake sale. It is going to be held Friday only from 8 a.m. to 530 the clipboards have been passed around, yeah, I noticed. They didn't make it to the right side, though. So if you were sitting on the south end, if you didn't make it, they're on the back table. Yes, and okay. please, if you can help, even if it's not for those designated times, just write in when you can help. Mm -hmm. um, of course, the more people that can help around 5 o'clock to help load up mm -hmm. is going to be much appreciated. Um, I can't take off work Friday, so hopefully we have some people that are able to help throughout the day. There were still several openings um, just a few minutes ago. So, um, And if you do bring baked items, you can bring them the day before or the morning around 8 a.m. We'll be here a few minutes early to be setting up. Garage shell drop-off can start today, and it goes <clears throat> office hours during the week, Thursday evening, and then, of course, Friday is the sale. It is set up downstairs. Feel free if you see something you want, the donation buckets up front. Take whatever it is that you see. And I think that's it. Okay. I'm downstairs serving, so if you have any questions, just let me know. Perfect. Thank you, Amanda, for continuing to lead that ministry. Um, if you're helping next week, uh, should be back up on the board here in just a second. There you are. So take note of that. And then... Uh, also, the school supply donation bin is in the back. If we could have those by Wednesday to make sure they get over to the Baptist Church in time. Uh, the, the actual distribution of those is next Saturday morning, which is the next slide. Um, okay, or not. And, uh, oh, I know what happened with that, so never mind. Yes, yeah, so next Saturday morning, 930 at the, at the Baptist Church. Youth group will resume on the 20th with an ice cream party. So you want to make sure that you're there for that. And um, our prayer meetings, I'm going to start a little focus this week to kind of do a five-minute devotion with it. And the focus is going to be on the vision of the church. So where is God leading us? And then focus our prayers on that. I think if we could all do that, man, what a great, uh, what, look out, God. You know, look out, world, right? Here, here we come. Uh, we're still in need of a cook and then a person to help with attendance during kids' group, which starts on September the 6th, so the Wednesday after Labor Day. 
And so looking forward to that. It's always fun to have the choirs and the kids are there. Also, one of the things that we are going to be doing this fall is hosting Keith Wasserman. Keith is the founder of Good Works, where we have taken uh, mission trips to. And uh, uh, several of the initiatives that we've started, like Neighbor Helping Neighbor and Block Parties and those kinds of things, are all a part of the ministry at Good Works. So we're stealing their stuff. And, uh, and so we've invited him here to have a more church-wide conversation over a weekend, the first weekend of October. But in, in, as we prepare for that, he actually wants to have a couple of times with the church to see what is it that we need to say. What, what does he need to say when he's here? And so uh, we're going to have those on uh, August the 20th and 27th at 630. It's open to anyone and everyone. And, uh, and so this is a, your invitation to that. Next week, we start a new worship series. Um, it, there has been a theme this year as we've gone through the year through Lent. It was about preparing ourselves and, and how the cross can rub us a, the wrong way at times. And then after was we believe in resurrection, and so the sightings of resurrection. And then came this of well, what happens if you don't believe in that? And so what are those questions? And so now where we're headed is what are the, the fundamental Stories. What are those core stories of the Bible that everyone who says I'm a Christian should know about? And so, uh, so we're going to start that next week. Thanks to Danielle for the for the beautiful image again. And uh, in lieu of, and and so I've actually kind of put together a 30 second uh, com, um, uh, video. Get it out to uh, and it's, this is out on Facebook. It's and it's on our website. So if you have an unchurched friend that you now know what they're talking about. And, and say, here's what we talk about. And so, uh, Daryl, go ahead and, and just show that real fast. Beginning with Abraham and Moses, from the first Passover lamb to the lamb that takes away the sin of the world, from God's most beloved son to God's own son, the king of kings. These are the fundamental stories found in the Holy Word. Starting August 13th and running through the month of September, Kingdom United Methodist Church will be looking at the core stories of the Bible, a guide for the followers of Jesus. So I'm excited about that and, and to, to, to remind us of those, of those stories that, that God has for us and what holds us together as Christians, regardless of, of the name on, on, out, on the, out on the board. So let us go from here to either time of fellowship downstairs or, or out into the world to seek out the lost and the lonely, to use every grace that God has given us. So may you stir up the gift of God that is in you. In you. Be zealous. Be active according to your strength. Speak for God wherever you are. Be humble. And let only that be in your mind, that which was in Christ Jesus. Amen.